Hello, what's up? Uh, how is everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. Uh, we're going to be combining random variables here. We're going to see what happens to the mean and the standard deviation when we do that. Remember, random variables, discrete random variables are things that are like whole numbers, right? But they're things that can, uh, you know, happen if, from things, things you can measure from objects taken randomly. So if you randomly, people are going by and you ask them their age, well, how old are you? How old are you? That's a, disc that's a discrete random variable. If they're randomly coming by and you're measuring their height, that would be a continuous uh, random variable. But we're going to be looking at discrete random variables. But actually, these formulas that we're going to learn today work for discrete and continuous random variables. And we're going to see uh, something interesting that happens when we try to add them, and specifically when we try to subtract random variables. And we're going to go on to do that right now. So here we go. So we're going to, con I always, for all random variable stuff, I just pretend it's a game, right? And I try to use spinners. So here's one of the games you can play. Game A, you spin it. And you can win zero dollars or you can win six dollars and then there's here's game b you spin it you can win six dollars or 14. so i just made a probability table for game a you can win zero 50 percent of the time six 50 percent of the time this one you win six or 14. now half the time you're winning six half the time you're winning zero hopefully you can see that the average amount you're going to win is going to be three bucks um, on average okay and the standard deviation, if you put one of our stats into your calculator, L1 and L2, uh, you'll find out that the standard deviation is also $3. And if you think, well, what the heck is a standard deviation? A standard deviation is the average distance, like how far off you're going to be from the mean typically. Well, if the mean's 3 and you're either getting 0 or 6, you're actually exactly 3 off from the mean every single time which is kind of interesting. You'll notice it even more in the second one, what I'm talking about. So if I spun this and I wrote down all my winnings, I won 6, 6, 14, 14, 6, 14, 16, 6, 6, 6, 6, 14, 14, 6, 6, and I added them all up and divided by how many times I played. On average, if I'm winning 6 half the time and 14 half the time, I'm expected to win $10 on average. Now, notice how far away from 10 is 6. It's 4 away. How far away is, four, I'm sorry, how, how far away is 10 from 14? It's 4 away. So both 6 and 14 are both 4 away. And as a matter of fact, the standard deviation of this game is $4. On average, you, you can expect the typical distance to the mean is going to be 4, or the typical dis distance to the expected value. So the expected value of B, which is also known as the mean, is 10. The standard deviation of this game, of this random variable B, is 4. Now, what happens if I say you can, what I want you to do is consider spinning both and you win the sum. So if you spin both of these, brrr, you can spin, hey, ring, you spin them and you win whatever's here in here, you add them up. Well, what would you get? Well, on average, if you're winning $3 here on average and $10 here, I guess I'd guess, I would win three plus 10, I'd guess, I don't know, $13 if you get to play both. That's my guess. This is a guess. I don't know if this is true. And then if this guy has a, if I'm off by three, and here I'm off by four, maybe I'll just add those three plus four, and I'll say seven. Okay, now remember, these are just guesses. Let's see if I can add my standard deviations and add the means. And the way I'm going to do that is consider all the possibilities. So I can win zero or six here and six and 14 here. So let's split these games up, use a tree diagram to actually see what might happen. So I start off, I start here, and I can spin play game A or game B. In game A, I win zero or I win six. So those are my winnings, zero, six. Then I go to play game B, and I can win six or 14. So I could have won these guys for game B. So I could take any of these four paths. If I won zero and six, I would have won six dollars overall. Zero and 14, 14 dollars overall. Six and six, I would have won $12 overall, 6 and 14, I would have won $20 overall. So these are my winnings, and this is the probability that A plus B equals A plus B, okay? So that's a probability that I ended up getting those things. Um, and how often would that happen? Well, since this is 50.5 happens 50-50, you multiply the probabilities, and I get a quarter of the time I'd win here, a quarter of the time I'd win here, a quarter of the time I'd win here, and a quarter of the time I'd win here. When I put that in a probability table, guess what? When I put this into L1, and I want you to try it on your calculator, put this into L1, put this into L2, and come back to me and see if the mean is 13 and 7 if you play these games together. And I'll pull my calculator out, and I'll do the same thing. 
So here we go. I've got them in my winnings L1, probability L2. So now all I have to do is um, I go to stat, over to calculations. I'm going to do one of our stats, second L1, comma, second L2. And let's see what it is. Look at my mean is 13. All right. And my standard deviation is six. My standard deviation is 5. So the mean of the combined ones was 13, but my standard deviation was 5, not 7. Whoa! So my standard deviation here was 3, my standard deviation here was 4, and my standard deviation here is 5. Where have you seen 3, 4, and 5 before in your life? Hmm? You've got it. The three, four, five right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, if you're trying to solve for c, remember that five, if I take the square root of both sides, that five is just the square root of three squared plus four squared. So that's why you find the missing hypotenuse. So the Com combinate when you combine random variables you can think of the hypotenuse of a right triangle so it still works out when you're tr when you're trying to find the standard deviation of a combined random variables that the standard deviation of one squared plus the standard deviation of the other when you add them um, you get the standard deviation of the combined game playing both games at the same time but what is this symbol called it's called the variance so if I'm trying to find this if I don't know what X is I'm just going to say, well, the combined is going to be the square root of, uh, sorry, sigma A squared plus sigma B squared. Okay. So remember, the way you find it is has always been you just add these guys up, square, well, square them, add them up, and take the square root. But some people are like, well, what happens if there's more than two? Well, just add all those variances. Just if you're combining three random variables, add their variances, and it gives you the variance of the other one. So if you're adding three together, the standard the standard deviation of the new one is just the square root of the sum of the variances. People call it the Pythagorean theorem of statistics, and for good reason. It's a lot like it, which is cool. So now we know that you, you don't just add the standard deviations. You square them, add them together. Three squared plus three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Added together is 25. Take the square root, and that gives you five. But what if instead, I want to consider spinning both and winning the difference. So spinning these and winning whatever you win here minus this. So if you if this gets 14 and this lands on a 0, 14 minus 0 gives you 14. Or if you land on a 6 and this lands on a 6, you win 6 minus 6, which is 0. So what if we want to combine these by subtracting B minus A? Well, let's think about it. What do you think the winnings would be? On average, if you're winning 10 over here, and on average you're winning 3 over here, what would you think you'd win if you win this guy minus this guy? On average, I guess I'd win 10 minus 3, which would be 7. So if I was going to guess B minus A, I guess my expected winning would be $7. If I, But what do you think the expected standard deviation would be if you're going to subtract game B from A? Well, I guess you'd look first and be like, well, Game B has a standard deviation of 4. Game A has a standard deviation of 3. So maybe I do 4 minus 3 and get a standard deviation of 1. I don't know. So that's just my guess. I'm just going to subtract the standard deviations. And let's see what I get. So think about this. You'd, you do the spinner, you either win 6 or 14 when you play B. And then you're going to win 0 or 6 when you play A. And you're going to subtract them. So if you took out a 6 and a 0, you would have won 6. 6 minus 6, you'd win 0. 14 minus 0, you win 14. 14 minus 6, you win 8. So you could win 6, 0, 14, or $8 in playing this B minus A game. And if we made a probability table, okay, of here's what you could win and the probability of it happening, um, you could win 6, 0, 14, and 8, each with a probability of 0.25. Remember, when you do a probability tree, you multiply the likelihood of them happening. If you put this into L1 and L2, which I'm going to do right now and run one of our stats, let's see what the mean of this game is and the standard deviation of this. Let's see if it's 7 and 1. I don't know. Why don't you try it right now?
All right, there they are, 6014. Okay, there they are. I've got my probability table. They add up to one. Perfect. So let's do stat over to calc. Run one of our stats on L1, comma, with a frequency of L2. What comes out? Yes, my mean is 7. My standard deviation is 5 again? What? So we got this 3, 4, 5 business going on? So I, I can understand that, but... I'm doing the Python. I'm adding the variances again. And the answer is, yeah, you're still going to square this, add it, and square this and add it. And it makes sense if you think about it. If one game had a standard deviation of five and another game also had a standard deviation of five and you were subtracting them, you wouldn't remove all variability, five minus five, and have a standard deviation of zero and win the exact same amount every time. Playing a game, you know, at your, even though you're subtracting, there's variability in each one. So you're increasing the variability of their combination. And that combination could be adding or subtracting. And when you think about it, subtracting is just adding a negative. So you're adding more variability. So even when you're subtracting random variables, you're still going to add the variances. So whenever you have it, if someone gives you some kind of process, I'll give you an example. If there's some process like boxing gifts, where, so like you work in a department store, you're boxing gifts, and you have to pick the box and then add the gift into it nice and neat, and then wrap that thing up. And suppose it took, on average, to pick the box two seconds, and to add the gift three seconds, and to wrap 12 seconds with a standard deviation of one, two, and four respectively. How long does the whole process of boxing take? Well, now you're adding three random variables. Let's see how it goes. Well, if it takes an average two and three and 12, I'm gonna expect it to add, take 17 seconds on, sorry, that should be seconds, on average. But am I gonna just add the standard deviations? No, I put in the teeth of death right here. Do not add the standard deviations. Make a new column. Find the variance of each one. The variance of this guy would be 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16. I'd add those variances up, 16 plus 4 is 21. And to find my standard deviation, I would have to take the square root of 21, which I can do in my trusty handy dandy calculator right here. The square root of 21 is 4.58. So the standard deviation of the whole process would be 4.58 seconds, okay? So do not add all the standard deviations together. Make sure you add their variances. Variances add even when you're subtracting random variables. So combining random variables is weird because you think you'd subtract them and you'd also subtract standard deviations, but anytime you're adding a new variable into your equation, you're adding in variability, you're adding in variance. So add those variances up. Every single random variable contributes their variance to the new combined random variable or the new game. I hope that made a little bit of sense. That was some hard stuff. I understand. Have a great day.